Hello everyone and thank you for coming to the channel. Yes. Dale Chanel's 48th World where you come home for all your news and reviews and just chit chatting time, okay? We're gonna be talking about another section in Portia's book. We're going into number chapter three. And it's all about Portia's childhood. Growing up as a teenager, smoking weed, getting crazy, getting drunk in the car, and pretty much her mama allowing all of it. And blaming it, guess what? On Portia's friends. Not Portia, not her baby girl. She pretty much said, you need to watch the company that you keep. Because they are making you do bad things. And I'm like, sit your ass down, Diane. Because you are a piss poor mom. I'm just saying because what I found out in chapter 3 is not glorifying at all. It's not a typical mama setting the tone, setting the direction for her child to follow. And definitely it's not a Christ-like type upbringing for her to formulate on how she wants to live her life as a young adult. Okay, but let's get on into it. Let's get on into it. But I'm going to title this chapter 3, Portia Williams, Young, Happy, Dumb, Fun Days. Okay, smoke another ooey. Okay, Portia goes on to talk about being a housewife is a choice. And if you're living a Christian life, it's an uh, honorable type position to hold. If you're lucky to have that type of position put to you. She's always talking about being in front of the cameras and all of this and all of that, okay? Everything that she sees that is successful has everything to do with material wealth and the people you surround yourself by, okay? And then she goes on to say, quoting her, for many women... Becoming a housewife is a choice, and becoming a housewife, a role not necessarily defined by a woman's partnership with her husband, but by her finding fulfillment in serving her family, her community, was definitely a choice I made. Let's be clear. I'm not talking about the women or, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not talking about the women that you've seen on the show that I've helped make successful. We all know that it's a cute, catchy title that barely scratches the surface of what's being a housewife is in reality. And I'm like, what the hell? Who Portia thinks she made of a show that already was going on before she got a part of it? What is Portia talking about? Because she wasn't the first lineup. First lineup of people was Lisa Wu, Deshaun Snow, Nene Leakes, Kim Zosiak, and Sheree Whitfield. When the Portia talking about she made some people? Who is she talking about, y'all? Because Portia's on a tour. A tour of her life is what she's giving us. And it's foolery, fuckery, fraudulent, and fake at its best. Okay? But I'm just saying. Portia's giving it to us. She says this is her autobiography. So in her life, this is what she's living. Okay? She goes in and talk about her husband, Cordell. How he wanted her to be a housewife, manage the house, take care of him and his children. But well, we see how that worked out, okay? Anyway, moving on from there, she goes on to say her mother and her dad talks or taught her how to be a boss, okay? She's definitely fawning over her mother's accomplishments of being an entrepreneur or uh, a successful businesswoman who owned daycare franchises in the Atlanta area. Now, as we did, y'all know I did a little, uh, what do you call it, um, episode of her book. I don't know if it was in chapter one or chapter two. It had to be one of them. Diane did not do good as a businesswoman. We all know she, you know, she had a civil lawsuit brought against her. That Portia had to own up and pay and all this kind of stuff. But she's just still seeing her mother as a successful businesswoman. And I'm like, no, your mother didn't go or didn't have enough tools. She didn't research the area enough to be successful. Because don't get me wrong, you could start any type of business and it may not go 
as well planned as you thought it would go because some things you just didn't anticipate you know but when you get around successful people that have been in certain things for a long time especially if it's kind of similar to what you want to do you need to get with them people you don't need to just say okay i'm gonna strike out on my own i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i have this amount of money but i'm only gonna project of using this type of money or this amount of money and this is where we're gonna go with it no no owner owning and having a business is a one day entity you have to take it each day as it comes but you always have to have secondary income coming in for when it is a slow time for your main business you see what i'm saying you gotta have jobs on top of jobs and then that main job to have that revenue stream but evidently i don't know what diane was thinking who she was talking to but in hindsight i'm sure she can recognize the moves that she went wrong things she could have did better things she could have not instituted at the time when she was trying to run her center and being due diligent with making sure staff was on top of what they needed to be doing because at the end of the day they're going to be looking at the owner and not necessarily the helpmates you see what i'm saying so portia's still in that false way of thinking even with writing this book giving her mother so much accolades instead of just saying you know mom did her best she was a go-getter she was a hustler she had some business savvy skills but you know this uh happened and this is why we felt that happened but we did what we could do and we resolved the issues as best we could and you know for whatever reason mom stopped you know doing business for herself that's not saying she was a failure failure it's just she failed at that particular um, ownership. She could have sought out to do something else, a little lighter, until she found her way. And then just add baby steps. But more than likely, like most of us do, we go full steam ahead. We think we know it all. We don't try to enlist it, uh, or enlist other people uh, around us that we know are good business people. Because we don't want to let them know that we don't know, in a sense. So... It is what it is. Portia's going to always look at her family, meaning her mother and dad, as the cream of the crop and not call them out on bullshit. So, and I know when you get a certain age, you know, you tend to think and you try to review what you've learned from a child from your parents. And then if the shit just don't add up, then you knew something was just made up or was just said. And that's just the way they thought about it. Even though you know it was a wrong way of thinking, it was flawed, but you went on with it. But that don't mean you take it under your belt and you do the same thing, because then you already know what shit going to happen. You're going to fail. But like I said, you got to crawl before you can walk, and those are very good stepping stones when you do fail, because you know the next time you try it, uh, you won't fail, because you've done your research. You've had the pitfalls. You know what to avoid. But uh, evidently, Portia wasn't listening and wasn't paying attention to her dad's mistakes as well as her mom. Okay, because she still succumbed to some of those pitfalls. Anyway, um, she goes on to say her mom was a hustler. Her mom had her own 24-hour daycare center after she divorced her dad. And she put a lot of work taking care of the community kids. And they kind of fell to the wayside, meaning her and her brother. She, always, uh, she definitely said that whatever her mama wants, her mama gets. Uh, in no certain terms, meaning I guess it don't matter if it's right or wrong. If Miss Diane wants it, she going to get it. So, And, you know, sometimes you can't do that. You know, you have to heed on caution and proceed with care. But... <laughs> Miss Diane won't hand that because Portia, that was her whole allotment of her mother in one nutshell. My mom gets what she wants regardless, and that's a boss. And I'm like, at what cost, baby? At what cost? Okay. So, it was something going on. Uh, Portia felt that, um, let me see. In fact, I was too rushed. You know, my dad I was kind of super. Uh, okay, so she was just really understanding the power of a woman having her own business and the benefits that it pretty much bought. Um, 
to fruition that women had more power than men had allowed them to have or that was pretty much the stance she was going on and favoring her mother because her mother had accomplished having several daycares under her belt and running them efficiently but we all know that she only had one daycare that we knew of that was publicized and that became a big lawsuit down the road because a child died on the premises of the so-called 24-hour daycare service center that her mom had owned. Okay, so we're moving on from there. Um, Portia started to realize what mat um, material wealth was about. And I'm like, well, you said later on in chapter 1 and 2. That your mother and your father kept you with the cream of the cream and you never knew or wanted for anything. So I'm kind of crazy on why you were concerned about uh, material wealth at this point of starting your own daycare when you claim you was all about that wealth thing from the beginning, day one, you coming into the world. But it just is what it is. She always said she always knew she had the tools to be a forefront, a forefront runner, uh, being her own boss. And she could not really work for anybody else because that was not in her DNA. Okay, so she wanted to do exactly what her mom did. So they both enlisted going out to the lower class income people. She named the particular projects at the time that were here in Atlanta, Carver Homes and Capital City. Anybody know about that? I don't know about Capital City, but I do know about Carver Homes. Maybe they renamed that or she renamed it from something else. But it is, uh, it was a poor uh urban neighborhood low income class individuals and she was saying her and her mom went and uh knocked on the doors leaving flyers letting them know that the service that she was providing at her 24-hour daycare center as well uh they offered uh pickup services and um bring the children back services and they would actually drive them to a plush newly redesigned facility to ensure they got there safely so you know Porsche was saying what these people were not used to was I guess a clean or uh, nice environment so she's pretty much dogging out her own people you know that have been put on hard times and they had to live a certain lifestyle life uh, a certain environment they had to be a part of as far as living but that's because where they at wasn't really where they were going to be staying at. It depends on how their altitude and their mental tube would get them out of the project. You know what I'm saying? But so Portia was, her and her mom was just banking on them being the same so they can keep getting their resi residen residential money from those people. Because more than likely it was coming from the state. Okay. Alrighty then. And, you know, she was also saying what her center was going to be supplying, which was two meals a day plus snacks. Um, then she even got real stanky. She said that, uh, let me read it quote by quote now. She said, we even put some of the children in sinks to bathe them because their young parents needed extra help. Okay, and I'm like, what well, Portia, what you, is this the same facility that you cooking food in and washing food? You bathing people in that too? Girl, how many code violations did you break? All right, you needed a room or an area just for grooming. You don't mix the two. That's all. You see what I'm saying? Portia, crazy as hell. And anybody that was in their care at the time, you know, they, you know, they sold them a bill of goods that wasn't worth the paper printed. And they was just, you know, trying to do what they felt was right. And Portia and her mom was just full of shit. Okay, because why are you bathing somebody in a, um, in a kitchen sink? I don't understand Portia. Okay, I don't, and it, it wouldn't went well with the people coming around inspecting the property and finding a staff member bathing, you know, in the sink where you're supposed to be producing, uh, washing uh, dishes, or you're supposed to be uh, washing the uh, produce that you were trying to feed the kids, the, the fruits and vegetables, but you, you're washing flesh in there too, human flesh at that. Whoo, child, but anyway, moving on from there. Uh, she did tell us that, you know, um, Portia's mom uh, had all this maternal 
interest in taking care of kids because um she used to take care of children in her mother's neighborhood back in New Jersey. Ashbury Park, New Jersey to be exact. So Diane always had it in her to be a mother or a mother hen to children. She knew she wanted to be a mother one day because she seems uh, from what Portia's writing that she always used to take care of the neighborhood, neighborhood kids, okay? Watching them and making special afternoon snacks for them. That's what Miss Diane was doing, okay? Servitude type work. But Portia said she was bossing up and being her own boss and that led her to becoming a daycare center provider, okay? Didn't know Diane was a preacher kid, PK, preacher's kid. Um, she was raised by a family of preachers and teachers. And my mother loved giving back in this way. Another extension of my family's legacy of service to the Atlanta community. And I'm like, okay, Portia, 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 Portia. Okay, Portia. Okay? Alrighty. And she's always comparing herself to being filmed at the other end. Look, man, uh, at the other side of the camcorder. So she's always viewing herself as in film. Like, you know, she's embodying herself in a, uh, I don't know, a stage scene. So I'm like, girl, why your mama didn't say or oh, see that you like to be in Wonderland all the time and you had all these different fantasies and dreams and aspirations? Why she just didn't sign you up for acting classes? Why you didn't be more proficient in the theater? You know, because they did have, I'm sure, plays in your high school and middle school. Or and then, or you could have took classes, you know, extracurricular activity outside of school. Your mother could have put you in these things, so it seemed like you have always wanted to be in the camera, on camera, and always center of attention. So, your mom missed the ball on that one, okay? Because you already had the face going on, you always already had the nice body, and. You know, I'm sure modeling agencies were out there. So what was Diane really doing with her time? Okay. Okay. And um, Portia goes on and talk about how her mother used to love for Portia to come in. And, um, you know, after school, of course. And, and, and help her with daycare center. You know, I'm like, okay. Alright, see Portia hangs around too many enablers, but we'll get back to that. Just enjoy the visuals. But uh, it was it was crazy. Portia mama told Portia one day she was having trouble with the help of her employees and she needed 17 year old Portia to go fire someone. Now how does a grown ass woman who own her own daycare center, a boss, an entrepreneur, going to allow a 17 year old to tell another grown person that they don't have a job, that they're not needed anymore? But let me, if you don't, uh, if you don't believe me, let me read it to you, okay? Oh, yes. It said my mother would tell me, Miss Jessica needs to be fired because she's been late and we just can't take it anymore. So you're going to need to fire her. And of course, Portia was taken back like, what? Are you, ki are you kidding me? <laughs> but she did what her mother told her to do. Okay. Portia goes on to say, when I let people go, I didn't just say you're fired. Now get going. I really wanted to emphasize that they were only fired because we valued them and they had disappointed us. I'm like, girl, are you on the slave uh, plantation? <laughs> Did you just get slaves off the ship, baby? And if they didn't perform how you told them to perform, you punished them. But in this, in this instance, you punished them by firing them. It, it, that's what you're telling me, Portia. But that's what she said. That's what she wrote it in the book. And going on, it says, your staff is only as good as its training. And my mom and I were invested in investing in people even when they didn't meet our expectations and no longer met our needs. What? 
Isn't that a shade of slap in the face or whatnot? Hell, if they ain't doing their job, that was something for your mama to do, not your young ass, okay? Because you weren't trained, you you weren't um groomed to even handle a firing or hiring expectation. Now, you're saying you and your mama's expectations were disappointed in their services, so y'all had to dismiss them. Or better yet, your grown-ass mama wanted you to dismiss them. Now, how piss-poor parenting is that, people? How piss-poor parenting is that? Okay? Your young high school coming from high school, and, and, you know, if she do a crime out there, she going to juvenile and you probably going to jail depending on the offense that your child committed but you going to allow her the uh young behind reefer smoking cell drinking that you allowed also and i'm gonna get into that you want her to fire a grown-ass person really is that how miss diane really gets down Evidently, Portia wrote it in her autobiography, and that's what she said. Her mama told her to fire the person. Okay. Portia went on also to say, I always wanted to encourage people, even in one of their darkest moments, that although this opportunity wasn't here for them anymore, I still wanted them to be better in the future. But I'll admit, when I wasn't about my business, it was hard not to slip back into my 17-year-old ways. Who wouldn't? <laughs> I'm like, girl, bye, 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 bye. And as I think it was in chapter one or two, Portia had said that her uh, dad lived in Stone Mountain. Well, look at, look at, look at who comes cooking. Her mother, yes, Portia's mom and her brother, they moved to Stone Mountain in a cul-de-sac. And I wonder, was that near her ex-husband? Was she trying to see what he was doing? Because they was on the other side of town. Or the other side of the cater from what Portia was saying in chapter 1 or 2. So the mama couldn't live nowhere else but Stone Mountain. I'm like, girl, hell, she could have moved to Conyers. She could have moved to Tucker, Georgia. But she was trying to follow your dad. That's probably what it was, Portia. She was trying to follow your dad and keep tabs on his behind. Because she moved her behind right on out there in Stone Mountain where your father was residing at the time. Woo, women, we got to do better. We got to do better. But this is the tricky part that comes up. Okay, Portia, and um, <coughs> she calls herself uh, skipping class. Mm-hmm. And this was in middle school is what she's saying. Okay? So middle school, to me, middle school should have been like from, well, see, when I was going to school, we went from uh kindergarten up to the seventh grade and it's like you were like 12 years old and then you entered in high school which was so a freshman you were 13 i mean you were 13 and then uh you would do your freshman through your high school uh well graduate from uh ninth grade to 12 but when i was in school we went from kindergarten to seventh grade then eighth grade um, high school through uh, 12th grade but now it seems like they break them up your uh, 7th and 8th and 9th grade are middle school and then uh, women well 7th and 8th grade is middle school and then 9th 10th 11th 12th you go to high school at least hell I think that's what it is my daughter 30 years old shit I forget but anyway she was wanting to have some fun her and her girls and I guess they boyfriends and you know back in the day, you know, parents, they don't have that much money to be having you ride around in high school. Because, you know, unless you was at the creme of the la creme. And at that point, Portia's mom wasn't quite there yet. So, she was uh, in the area where, you know, every day, middle class probably, uh, just a touch up from low low class. But just a little, little touch up. Um, she was in the middle class section. And they, parents used to get them, I call like an ABC car. Like, get them to school meaning high school get them to a after school job and they can run around in the neighborhood the surrounding community not trying to get on those expressway going nowhere like they going off to college and stuff like that but just an a b car you know and then when they were going to college you probably get them an abc car meaning it's just going to get them to they the, you know the campus whatnot and get them home on the weekend if they wanted to come home but she was just a little bit upgrade from the ab car you know what i'm saying 
at least that's how I saw it when I got my daughter her first car at 16 okay it was an AB car I mean it didn't have no smoking emission problem but it wasn't worthy to be on the expressway it only you know had to get you from you know what a little job you wanted in the community and, and, and back from high school to home you see what I'm saying and then you know going out with your friends to the movies and stuff like that in the surrounding community but um yeah but that, that's the kind of cause I was talking about. But anyway, they she goes on to talk about, you know, they was running around. You know, had skipped some couple of classes. And they were just chilling with their boyfriends. And, you know, it was a magical time for them. They had rolled up a blunt. And everybody was like, you know, like Snoop Dogg, puff, puff, pass, pass. And I could say, you know, sister girl got with the weed. But the weed that I had must have been some laced weed that... I don't know, because I was a cooler drinker or wine drinker in high school. So, I was getting more buzz off my wine cooler than I was the, um, you know, the, the, um, the weed that I was smoking that, the, you know, the, the jocks had had, you know, because, you know, I used to be a majorette back in the day. And, you know, we used to hang with the jocks, the basketball, the football players and stuff like that, because we were just cool kids like that. You know, we, you know, we, 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 we were like ABC students, you know what I'm saying? We made the grade, but we, we, we was, we. We were popular, but we like kind of like be on the down low, cause we be going to grown folk shit, and you know we just be somewhere everywhere. But we stayed kosher. When you saw us in public, you ain't see us doing like nam infraction. You didn't smell stuff on us, and we came to like attention when we saw people. <laughs> that we weren't expecting to see you know how you be seeing your neighbor that's close to your pa your parents and you be like no nah, or the one you go to church with like no nah. you know what i'm saying so everybody came to attention in my circle when shit was going down with grown folk no mm -mm, we didn't want nothing to get back to our parents we didn't want nothing to get back to the principal at school no we were a grade students we were like participating in boys club we was on uh us uh, what call it uh it's SIA students in action uh council groups we you know we were just talking about everything politically correct you know we had to be attention you know what i'm saying but when it was like you know the sun went down and we was at pep not pep brothers but we was at games and we was at other high school games shit came out we were real wild and you know i'm just saying but when it was time to act correct we act correct but portia i don't know what kind of friend she was hanging around and the thing i want to say she was the ring leader because portia want to make like she want a ring leader but i didn't know she was a ring leader she just tried to play like her child with all that in the bag of chips you know what i'm saying but anyway she thought her mom was at work one day Portia mama on that work, honey. I don't know if she had a bad day or she got out early or whatever. But she should have been at that daycare. Because then the things probably wouldn't have been happening to her later on down the road. You see what I'm saying? With that child, you know, dying in her care and, you know, all this other stuff and fractions. She losing everything. You know, if it's too much for you, break away, baby. Go, go get a nine to five. You know what I'm saying? But don't mess with nobody kids. Don't, don't do that. Because that, that's an early sentence to the prison cell or to the graveyard. Whichever comes first or whatever parent you done took. You know what I'm saying? Child from. But anyway, I digress from that. Of course, you were riding around in the neighborhood. Why would she ride around in her own neighborhood is beyond me. But I'm thinking she probably wanted to go in the house and chill with her friends. But she didn't know her mama was there. Why would they drive around in a circle and her cul-de-sac is beyond me. But somehow Portia got a peripheral vision of her mother's car in the driveway. Around, I guess, the corner or something. Child, but they had did too much damage. Because evidently Diane was looking out the mirror or looking out the window. And child, Portia thought she was pulling up to get out. Her mama was looking for her. And was ready to pull her ass out that car. Literally, she did, from what Portia said. She said they were smoking, they were laughing, they were kissing, they were giggling. It was the perfect afternoon when you didn't have to worry about responsibilities at the family business. I could just be a teenager for once. We rolled around a bit until we made our way back to my driveway. Oh, child. She said she thought her mama wasn't home, wasn't home but hey, her mama was. Okay. But, um, uh, she said, uh, her mama recognized her, 
came out that house running up to the car and she said Portia Portia is that your little ass in there I thought I heard her say through my green haze meaning she was really going with the ooh wee the ooh wee was strong but she heard her mama voice though okay and she Portia said she didn't answer her or anything cause she really wasn't sober enough she said honey my mama snatched me through that car window and dragged me back into the house okay before the door closed she had some final words for me okay and my friends she said y'all get out on my driveway go home i was too high to even be embarrassed i thought you ain't no sister being embarrassed she grabbed your ass out that car that was enough right there and it probably scared the shit out of your friends they didn't want miss diane to get a good look at them because she might know their parents you see what i'm saying and why she sitting up there you know thinking she gonna tear you up when you get in the house she might be dropping dime on them so they just wanted to ease on out just like they eased on in that driveway they probably eased on out rolling up the manual window because <laughs> they probably didn't have a little push thing where it just roll on up that's why they should probably snatch you out that window because they had the roll up window thing going on and and when you're high you can't think straight and you can't go fast everything's just in slow motion so anyway Hun and Portia mama got her in that house. Yes, child. Got her in that house and um told her she wasn't gonna fuss out because she knew she was just damn too high. And she wouldn't hear anything she was telling. She said, I ain't, I ain't mad that you was smoking reefer. That what she said. She said she wasn't mad. And she said, You too damn high for me to even holler at you to make a difference. But I'm like, um, uh, Mama Diane, why weren't you? uh mad at Porsche smoking reefer they have too much PSA public service announcements out there that just like drinking is dangerous smoking weed is just as dangerous could have hurt somebody could have hurt themselves but Porsche said you ain't give a damn you say I ain't, I ain't mad at you baby I ain't mad at you but then she goes on to say she worried about her neighbors she worried about the aesthetics that Porsche and her friends put her in making her look like she is raising you know a heathen out there with the blaring music unsightfulness you know how i'm saying then she portia go on to say we live in this neighborhood we live in stone mountain with these racist white people i'm like hold up hold up flag on play you worried about some white racist people why aren't you worried about your own color okay because it's a lot of black folk the kids don't do weed they say no to drugs but you only worry about the white man and the white woman what the hell wrong with diane okay but that's what portia said then she goes on to say it's not smart portia you're sitting in the car you're driving around and smoking reefer okay then she said you could have been in an accident and your friends your friends aren't even looking out for you because if they were looking out for you they would have known better i'm like what the hell do portia got to do on those kids hell it could have been your own daughter who bought the reefer okay who bought the booze have you ever thought about that diane why you blaming these other kids they could have been kosher and they just wanted to hang with portia because she was the little popular one you know what i'm saying the cute one and all that draw in the attention why you gotta say it was her friends and why, why why it couldn't be all of them looking out for one another why i got to be they got to be watching out for your child you see what i'm saying that's where this entitlement comes from portia get it honestly just specifically from what portia said her mama trying to blame the other kids y'all her mama trying to blame the other kids instead of she getting portia together okay I'm like that's that was like wow 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 okay then Portia goes on to tell us that she had to go to a specialized school in Atlanta now specialized school we call open campus the only time you go to open campus if you don't excel real well and you're trying to get in college and you can go there for some studies or whatnot but the main project of having open campus at the time when it was really introduced to the community is because either you got pregnant and you couldn't finish school because you know your pregnancy and you had to like fall behind and catch up on your studies or you were a wayward child out there not being disciplined 
not being obedient to the rules and regulations of coming to school, doing your homework, doing right at school, going home, being a productive uh, person in society. Then you had to go. Like, you know, you the one came to school with guns or you wanted to fight all the time or you just be belligerent and just disruptive. That's when you had to go to open campus. And see, that's what's wrong with Portia. She was falling behind and all this kind of craziness. And she didn't, uh, she had no uh, formal ideas of going to college. And her mother and daddy didn't give a damn either. Uh, she even said, um, since my parents ran their own business, college was never a necessity. So I was footsteps away from being my own boss. So see, Paul had always said, she ain't got no school. She ain't going to go to no school. She had no uh, revelations of trying to be a, a productive person in society. She didn't want no post-secondary education. She didn't need that. All thing she needed was hope, prayer, and a dream. And she was going to go out there and get it. <laughs> I'm like, girl. Oh, no foundation, no structure, no uh, n nobody to teach her how to be a respectable citizen in society. And she had two parents, guys. Two parents, okay. Oh, but anyway, moving on from there, Portia goes on to say she, you know, was trying to open up her daycare center and she was relying on some NFL player to kind of help her out. But that's another whole story that's really not worth getting into until towards the end. I'm going to tell you about it. But Portia found herself basically being a video hoe. Uh, even though she wasn't com saying she was a video hoe like the other girls that was on the set. Trying to make these little videos for these rap uh, people. Uh, like 8-Ball and MJG. You know, I think they was a rap group. And they, she was talking about So So Death, which was Tremaine Dupri, uh record company or, or record recording label. And then you had Disturbing the Peace, which was ludicrous uh, here in Atlanta. And she was just, you know, being a part of different videos they were making. Because, you know, you had to have the hot, fresh faces, the hot-looking girls, the hot-body-looking girls in the videos. And, of course, you know, they were doing a lot of things for some change. You know what I'm saying? They wanted the pretty ones, but they wanted them to be street -wise too and of course Portia felt like she was a little step up from that but she still wanted to partake in those shenanigans which she did and um she called herself dating somebody you know she didn't really give the guy's name uh but he's supposed to have been something or someone to her uh but it just is what it is okay uh but I think the guy was turned out to be like an NFL player she said it's from the Washington Redskins. But anyway, uh, he wined and dined her and brought her out to his home and stuff. And, you know, was dating her off and on. Portia saw, you know, big things going, you know, big things happening with him. And this, that, and the third. Because first she blew him off, but then he really was persistent. Like this video shoot uh, thing she was at and somebody... He gave the number to gave his number to somebody. They got it back to Porsche, and Porsche was reluctantly wanting to call him. But I guess she was intrigued with you know his uh, tenacity and his aggression to get to know her. She just you know called him up one day, and they was chit chatting here and there. Then it turned into a, a whirlwind pursuit, a uh, year long pursuit of one another. And, of course, Portia went out to football games. Uh, he treated her, bought her, you know, sashayed her. Even brought her up into the pen with the other wives and girlfriends of the NFL players at the time. Uh, which he was a part of the Washington Redskins, I think she said. Uh, but she walked in a situation where all the black guys that were dating, she thought she was going to find some minority women up there or black women which to her surprise they were all white uh so she was in the cast of all these black football players but their girlfriends or their wives were white so she finally had the realization that god dog it they want to date us they want to screw us they want to party with us but they don't want to marry us and i'm like okay portia i'm glad you found that out all right baby yes that's what some of them do not all of them but some but it seemed like this guy was a real jerk. 
uh, because he wine and dined her and I have to fault P Portia to some degree on this too because it's too much information out there about protecting yourself not just from pregnancy but from HIV or other sexually transmitted diseases so when you calling yourself being with this guy Ryan and raw and all like that what do you think can happen but anyway to make a long story short she got pregnant uh, she thought the boy was going to be very receptive to it. He wasn't. He had told Portia he would take the baby. And his mom and uh, him would raise the baby without her help. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Uh, get pregnant for hire? <laughs> Whatever. You can impregnate me. You want to take my child, our child, and you want to raise it and just disregard that I'm his mother? But that's what Portia was looking at. And I think she said his name was, but you know, then again, she said she was not putting people's name in the book uh, because of whatever issues. But it says Clinton P uh, Portis that played for the Washington Redskins, but I know she was dating uh, Duke Williams that played for, I think, the Buffalo Bills. Uh, and I showed, I think I did show some, um, a clip of him. And I'm wondering, was it him? But, you know, like I said, it just is what it is. He didn't want her. And uh, Portia, uh, which I think was, again, a bad choice. Because it wasn't a situation that he raped her. And that you would even come to the conclusion that you wanted to have a baby. You know, bring the baby into the world. Uh, it wasn't that type of situation. They were fucking. They, you know, she wasn't protecting herself. And he probably saw her as a gold digger. But, you know... He was stupid too because he should have been protecting himself or asking her, you know, if he didn't want to wear a rubber, was she taking the piss? Something, you see what I'm saying? But they both still should have been wearing a condom, especially when he wasn't showing her or finessing her like he wanted her to be in his life permanently as a wife, you know what I'm saying? But to make a long story short, uh, she was happy that she found out she was pregnant. She notified him. And he, like I said, he said, well, okay, if you want to have the baby, uh, we can have the baby. But it, me and my mom are going to raise the child. And then he totally disregarded her being any involved, making any involvement to be with the child, raising the child, or being a part of the child's life. So, uh, Portia, like, she wasn't going to do that, this, that, and the third. She went and told her mom about it. And her mom, which I was, like, very upset, she said, oh, yeah, have an abortion, you know, because it's best, you know. I said, what? I said, what kind of shit is that? What kind of parenting is that? I cannot phantom. I mean, you love the guy. You wanted to marry the guy. You saw a life with the guy. So why didn't you just go on and have the baby? The baby was here. And, but your mama told you, yeah, you can go on and get rid of it. It's his loss. You have another child. I like, uh-uh. And y'all always tell me not to get on Miss Diane or Miss Diane did her raising whatever her child does at this point. It ain't no, no, uh, it's, it's no fault of the parenting. And I like, I can agree with that to a certain degree. But if your child come to you all messed up in the head, not really knowing what to do, and you really get to the meat and potatoes of this conversation and the situation and what that, what she felt about this guy prior to knowing that he didn't want to have a baby by her, then, you know, because you know, things could have changed. She could have fell in love with Portia, you know. Uh, or he could have just said, no, you're going to be in the child's life. And yes, you know, I make all the money. See, this is what I thought it was, D. Williams, Duke Williams, for the Buffalo Bills. But, you know, like I said, I don't know. You know, she's calling herself, changing names to, to take the privacy of somebody. But somebody did me like that. Shit. I'll be hollering from the whole ceilings and everything else. Okay? And having a baby at the same damn time. But, um. Uh, it is is what it is. You know, it was a choice they made. I really don't think Diane should have told her that. You know, uh, yeah, that's Duke Williams. Uh, kind of like Dennis McKinley, don't it? But, uh, you know, we know she hired, went on and dated more NFL players, Cordell Stewart. And I don't know why she couldn't get pregnant with him. I, I, I can't remember. But, you know, Portia's had a lot of things happen to her. And she blames it on someone else. And, you know, her thought as she goes along in the book, she blamed the guy. But I'm like, you got to take accountability 
along with that decision that was made because you sat there. Then you went to your mama who's supposed to be your rock. She should have told you, baby girl, he ain't hurt you. You know, y'all love each other. Things can change. You know what I'm saying? That's still you in there. Have a baby. I help you out. And I'm sure with that being his first child, after he probably got a paternity test and whatever, he would have loved that baby too. And if he didn't love that baby, he would have been paying for that baby. Okay, and if he didn't pay for the baby, it's okay. Because God got you. You know what I'm saying? But see, Diane's just piss poor parenting. Y'all ain't gonna know. I said, the more I keep reading this book, Portia's not making her mama look good. And I don't know if she's doing it intentionally or self-consciously. But, I mean, she's really destroy, destroying her mother and her dad in this book. And it's crazy. I can see why she don't like, uh... Uh, Miss Gina because in that thing I think she said that the mother-in-law after everything was said and done what did she say and that was piss poor too of that lady his mom saying it uh, shoot no oh. she said something back smart about Portia um Okay, she said, I later found out that even his mother wasn't supportive of our situation, joking that she wanted to take me to Maury uh, to determine if the child was really his. Meaning, more, you know, Maury show, uh, you are the father, you're not the father. You know that little um, show that he used to um, do DNA tests for couples that didn't know if they were being railroaded by their mate. Uh, trying for them to take care of somebody else's child and you know like I said you know it is what it is you know what I'm saying because that was still been her grandchild because that still was a part of her son and if she was that shallow weak and and stupid you know it hey but like I said Portia done played it kind of wrong that still was a life that still was her in there somewhere in a bad situation could have turned into a very good situation but it just is what it is but like i said i don't know what kind of parents uh you know it's almost like diane and and jose the second they need to have children because to see portia just spinning out of control and her mama on the show with her and not even trying to give her no direction or you know even disagree with her when she say stupid shit just get into her ass so we'll know well damn portia came from good stock portia just acting a fool on her own you know what i'm saying but you know diane just very uh lackluster uh very passive when it comes to you know whatever portia does you know, it's just like, well, that's Portia. You know, as long as she's taking care of me, feeding me, and letting me live in the lap of luxury, I don't care what she do. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Damn, my dream gone. You know, the girl up here smoking weed, having a good time, and just look at her life right now. She going from man to man to man and not finding no happiness. And it's all because of Diane. Diane set the tone. She set the foundation. That Portia going out there and sell her looks for something. You know what I'm saying? Because even she acting like she trying to get a second win of the fountain of youth. Like, nah, baby. You had it when you had it. You just go on gracefully into the sunset. Okay, because you got more years behind you than you have in front of you. And to leave Portia out here looking so mentally destitute. That's crazy as hell. But anyway, guys, that's all I had for this video. Hopefully, y'all enjoy it. Take it in small doses because, you know, it was kind of long, but it's very entertaining. I'm telling y'all, it was entertaining. I damn sure enjoyed it myself. I enjoyed talking to you all. It's like I was in the uh, room with y'all, and y'all was just listening to me give y'all little bits and pieces. And then we were taking a short break so y'all can dive in and say what y'all feel about this situation. Okay? But like it, love it, gotta have more. You know, I'm gonna give it to you every time I can. All right, but uh, definitely like, share, and subscribe to the channel, babies. And I'll see y'all later. Bye bye.